Bennett Marine Video is America's leading producer and largest supplier of marine and outdoor instructional programming, offering a wide variety of subjects, covering boating, sailing, seamanship, GPS, navigation, electronics, cruising, fishing, and scuba diving. The Bennett Marine Library consists of more than 2,000 titles. Should just pull straight up. First things first, just give it a good the other way. We ride it in, the fuel connector, two bolts, that's it. There's a, a large gap, float height should be better test tank. They're well used, very quick. You can snug it into place, okay, they're all, uh, don't worry about it. Should be done every year. Very simple procedure. My name is Dan Jones and I'm a master mechanic and I'm here to show you how to maintain your Mercury and Mariner outboard. By just spending a few hours each season on service and maintenance will extend the life of your engine and in the long run it's going to save you money. So let's get started. Okay, we know that in order for your outboard to run we need fuel, spark and compression. So let's start your maintenance by checking your spark. What we want to do is remove the spark plug boots and we're going to actually remove the spark plugs to uh, check the check for spark. Now spark plugs are a regular maintenance item and realistically they should be changed every year. And as I can see by this spark plug here it's oil foul and that will uh, uh, get your fuel economy um, down. It'll also make the engine run rough. So what we want to do now is we're going to check spark. We know that the spark plugs are well used and that could be a problem with the fuel system or the ignition system. So let's check the spark and make sure we've got good spark. So just insert your spark plugs back into your spark plug boots. Now you've got to, when you do this you want to make sure your spark plugs are grounded against the block. Remember when you pull this engine over and there's spark this produces approximately 40,000 volts and it will give you a zap so be cautious. Once you've got them laid against there just pull the engine over and we can see a nice crisp blue spark on both spark plugs. Okay so we know that your spark is okay. Now let's presume that we did not get spark as in this scenario here. There are two things that can cause uh, a no spark situation on this engine. Number one is we can check the stop button itself on your tiller handle or your lanyard safety stop switch which is here. First of all you want to make sure that your lanyard stop switch is up and in the run position. If we know that both of those are working correctly and we pull this over and we don't get any spark then what we can do is eliminate these two out of the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to disconnect the black yellow wire sitting right up in here from the switch box assembly. If we just pull it apart, lay it off to the side. Now what we're going to do is come back again and we can check the spark. Okay, by pulling it over we do get spark. So we know that the problem is in the uh, lanyard stop switch or your stop button. And at that point this should be taken into a dealer to get him to inspect it for you. What we want to do is on the connector itself at the engine there is a little pin that you should be able to depress with your finger. As you can see that I'm doing here. If it is stuck that's probably a reason why we're not getting fuel in there and then you'll have to remove that, uh, replace it or clean it up, push it back in, see if it springs back freely. Then you should have fuel in there. So let's remove the fuel filter assembly at this time. These can be very tight to get off so what, what you can do to ease it is actually turn it out a little bit and it's on a joint there that's not going to hurt anything and then grasp it and just loosen it off. So as we loosen this off and there's your filter cartridge and inside there is actually your fuel filter itself. So let's empty that back into our jar. So I'll just pour that in that container and we know that our fuel system from our tank, our connector, our fuel filter, everything there is fine. And while we've got this off, we'll put a, a new fuel filter in the system. But we still may have a blockage from the output of the filter to the carburetor assembly. It's easy enough to pull that uh, hose off of there, undo a tie strap that holds the fuel line onto the fuel filter assembly, a pair of side cutters, cut the little tie strap that's on there. And sometimes these are difficult to take off. So what, if it doesn't pull straight off, what I do is I get a, uh, I'll get a screwdriver and insert it between the 
the hose and the body of the filter assembly itself and just loosen it off and then you should be able to just pull it off of there. If you're really brave, you can go like this. And that can tell you that that line is clear going into the carburetor. If it doesn't, then what I would do is I would remove the tie strap from this area here, pull it off and make sure we haven't got a blockage in this line. In that case, we have to remove the carburetor and go through repair on there. The Bennett Marine Library consists of more than 2,000 titles. Visit our website today at www.bennettmarine.com for a complete product listing. To place an order or request a free catalog, call 800-733-8862 or 310-827-8064. Our fax number is 310-827-8074.